to Ianthe Creations, I'm Claire and today we're going to do the Nova sling bag. Now this is an amazing pattern. Um, I had the privilege of testing this bag. Um, it is absolutely amazing. You have a zip pocket here, a flap here you have a side pocket a back pocket another side pocket and then this is the ingenious bit you can open it and you've got your zip here and you have an inside pocket too and the amazing thing about this bag is it can be a sling open this up and it becomes a backpack i did take some photos of me wearing it so this is it as a sling a backpack a shoulder bag and a crossbody bag now the first one i made i did the strap lengths as uh, 48 inches which is great for backpack wearing. I'm a bit bigger and it was a bit tight for um, crossbody sling. Um, but you can also, you can get it as a shoulder bag. This one I did with 60 inch straps and it works with all of them. Um, and is quite comfortable. So it's worth even if you make your straps longer than you necessarily need you can trim them up at the end and um, get it to the length that works for you and then just take a note of it um, there is so many combinations I mean you can see in this one I've just done um, they look different just just for the fact that you've used different fabrics but there's so many ways you can combine the different um bits like all the sides i'm going to show you the pictures of what rachel's done um and um you can see where that she's color blocked it again it looks completely different it is a bag that you can add so many personal touches to and just make it completely your own um so i hope you enjoy this video um it is a brand new pattern that is being released and the video is being released at the same time so i really hope you enjoy making this bag i can see many more of these in my future because they are just such a phenomenal bag okay well i hope you enjoyed enjoy the video and if you do please like and subscribe my channel and um i'll see you soon Bye. Right, so you're going to need your O piece and your two inch rectangle ring, your P piece and your two three quarter inch D rings. What you're going to do is going to take your piece, fold it in, fold it in half, and then fold it in half again. And then in half again and then you can take that to the, we'll take that to the machine and we'll top stitch down there and there um, you can also press it with your iron providing whatever fabric you're using can be pressed by an iron and then with your P piece we're going to fold it in half if not you can draw a line halfway through if you find that easier. Keep it down. And then we're going to take those to the machine and just top stitch along the edge. And I'll be right back. Right, so now I've top stitched along here and along here. You're going to get your two inch D, 
two inch rectangular ring we're going to fold it down pop a clip on and then you're going to stitch as close to here as you can and then fold your P piece in half one on one D ring hold it down And again, you're going to just stitch as close as you can to the hardware on all three and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have now top stitched across here on those. So that is the end of these connectors done. So we'll go on to the next step now. Right, so we're going to need our, <coughs> our end strap end, our piece end strap end cover. And we need to measure the distance in the pattern. Now I've gone, I've, I've added, I've doubled it um, because when I then fold to this line, it means that you get the correct seam allowance. It just makes it easier rather than drawing the correct line and then trying to um, get everything up to it this way. When you fold it up to the line, you get the correct turn. Put a bit of sticky double sided tape that I probably won't be able to peel off because you know, me and double sided tape. I'm using cork, um, you can use anything. The first one I did I used waterproof canvas you can use vinyl you can use all sorts it's such a um, a changeable bag you can you can do so many different things and change up so many different bits so you can get different looks every time I'm gonna put just a couple of um, small clips just very little ones just to help with the movement right so now I'm going to fold up to the edge and I'm going to work from the inside out And then the, because there's not much give in, um, cam in cork, the, the, the little clips just help you maneuver it round. So once you've done that, I'm going to take it to the machine and we're going to stitch along here, top stitch along here, and we're going to fold it and we're going to stitch along here back up to top stitch length and i've also made sure to put my teflon foot down on my um machine just to help um go with the um cork i'm just going to give it a quick roller to help flatten down the seams So now we're going to top stitch that. And then we're going to fold it. And sew it with the seam allowance in the pattern. Remembering to start and stop. Oh, and remembering to go to construction then stitch. And then just press that 
see my pen. And now that's the end of this piece. You leave it inside out. We'll go on to the next step now. Right, so we're going to take our zip and our zipper pull. I found these and I thought they were rather cute, especially as I've got Eiffel Towers on my um, fabric. So zips slightly longer um, because I hadn't added the pull I will add it I will do it when I've make sure I burn the ends right now you are going to want to take your zip and you're going to want to mark down the distance in the pattern Then what you're going to want to do is fold to that and pin across so what we're doing is we're we're causing a we're blocking off the end of the the zipper um zipper pull so you can't accidentally pull your zipper off a zipper end even so again pinch and put round there's lots of different ways of doing this this is just the way that I do it and then I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm literally just going to stitch here. I don't know if you can see just just here on both of them and then I will be back. Right, this can be a little bit fiddly so you might find you want a stiletto or something pointy just to hold down your um, fabric whilst you stitch it. There we go. Right, so now you can see that that's turned off so when you your zip's not going to come off now it's it's on there as long as you don't pull it off the other end Okay, so I've put the tape on. I need the other one now. So I, I was just recording and then I suddenly realised I had the zip up down the wrong way. 
so let's try again so I've put some double-sided tape along here and we're going to put the zip this bit down down towards the bottom not up towards the top because otherwise if you go to pull your zip um, it'll pull straight off this bit's a little bit fiddly but it gets there no oh, where's my tape gone Good job I went to, re I realised what I'd done. I wouldn't want to unpick all this top stitching. bit time consuming and a little bit tricky but it's worth doing right because it's a major part of the bag right so now we've done that side we go over and do the other side again we want the side that's not folded over oh look there's that sticky tape that I just lost. Right. So we just need to put some. What I'm trying to do is sort of follow the line on the back of the zipper tape to sort of um, give me a guide to sort of work where I want to put it to try and keep it straight. Right, so now, again, taking the side that's not folded over. Going to bit easier when you've got your head in the game. Right, so now what we're going to do is take it to the machine and we are going to top stitch all the way down and all the way back up and then we're going to go all the way down and all the way back up on that side making sure you've gone back up to your top stitch length which is three for me on my machine the zip I'm just going to move that out of the way
side done. Now to do the other. too good to be true. I lost a bobbin chicken. All right so note to everyone else make sure you've got lots of bobbin thread unlike me. you folded the ends your zip won't fall off now you need to get your end piece and you're going to poke right, right now you're going to take your end piece and here and you're going to slide this through and you need to measure Um, if I don't kill myself with a ruler, I need to measure down the distance in the pattern. And making sure that this seam bit is at the back. get it to there to your measurements making sure that this bit here is flat to the back that's in the middle take that to the machine I'm going to stitch across it so construction then stitch you're going to stitch across it with the seam allowance in the pattern right now we're going to stitch across there now we didn't think the needle was threaded
I'm going to leave that as it is. Don't move, do anything else with it at the moment. Um, and then we are going to go on to the next step. Right, so you're going to need your piece Q, R and S and your zip. So you're going to place your R piece right side up, the zipper right face up, right way up. And then you're going to go to the machine and you're going to stitch across, flip it out, stitch it and then you're going to do exactly the same with the other one. So back to construction length stitch. Turn it over, stitch that down. same right side up right side down just make sure you line up there again I've, I've done my Q and R I think pieces the same size I will just cut off the excess I've done them to the both to the bigger size and I'll cut off the excess so I don't have to worry about whether I've put the right one in the right place side for now and we'll get on to the next bit so now you're going to need your zipper facing piece Q your zipper overlay and your exterior front top A C sorry right so we're going to measure down the distance in the pattern I am using a air erasable pen Make sure whatever you use is erasable. Right. She says, I really hope it is on this fabric. Now you're going to take your Q facing piece. Bearing in mind, I use, um, what do I use? I use um, fabric not the iron-on interfacing because I get in a pickle and I have been known to iron the interfacing to my iron instead of my bag. So I just use um, the cotton as whatever the pocket is. But that's the great thing, there's so many different ways of doing pockets and everyone has their own way of doing something. So. There's no right way or wrong way, it's just whatever works for you. Now, from there, we're going to draw down the amount in the pattern, draw a line, and then draw another line. And then we want to make sure it's in the centre. Line. 
Sorry, I can't read my ruler. So let's try again this side. was wrong now it's right so we're going to take that to the machine and we are going to stitch I'm going to stitch along here and along here I'm not going to stitch down these lines you can if you want I just don't all right so we're going to go down to a slightly smaller stitch length starting as close to the middle as uh, the close to the top bit there as you can And then getting as close to this one as you can if you need to drop your stitch length down some more because the more accurate you are with the stitching the better your zip pocket is looking oh, I've not quite right now this is where if you if you want if you're not very sure about doing pockets you can draw a line through there and then those two there and that's what we're going to cut Seam ripper. the lid to this right so once you've got your seam ripper you're just going to start it off and then with a pair of scissors you're going to cut down doesn't matter if you're not very straight you are solely just cutting it in half and then going as close as you can to the stitching without cutting the stitching and it's all in the cutting and the stitching that makes the zipper neat. So then what we're going to do is we're going to bring it through. You see they're just poking through a bit but that's fine tuck them in they'll be caught when we sew round um, the zipper there we go right. and then give that a press the zipper neat so then what we're going to do is we're going to Bring it through. You see they're just poking through a bit, but that's fine. Just tuck them in. They'll be caught when we sew round um, the zipper. Right, so now we've done that, 
and just give that a quick press. Right, I've given that a quick press. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take our C um, zipper overlay. And we're going to overlay it on here, like so. What I'm going to do is use some double-sided tape. And I'm going to put it in the middle because then this way if your machine can't handle throw, sewing through the double sided tape it won't interfere with your stitching. I mean I know mine can but I'd rather not put it in seam allowances if I can get away with it. This will just help you to be able to position, position, to put it in the right place and um, keep it held whilst you stitch it. Just talk about monkey shells while I try and peel this off. You know, I think somebody should invent a gadget that means you can pull off double sided tape really easily. Right, so now we're going to place this on here. We want to look for the best fit that we can. Now we're going to take it to the machine and we're just going to stitch around the outside. We're not doing this bit yet, we're just stitching around the outside. So, because it's um, vinyl and you can see, or oh, it's cork actually, and you can see the stitching, I'm going to pull my threads out and then I will tie them at the, at the end. So you just want to sew along here, so back up to your top stitch length no back stitching out and now I'm going to pull these threads through at the back and it just means then you've got no back stitching showing um, but all your threads are tied off so it would be the same as back stitching which just means you haven't got the bulk on the right so now you've done that look at that oh, i'm rather pleased with that if i do say so myself oh exciting so even now, simple things have used simple minds. Right. A bit more tape on here. Right, so 
now we want to center the zip and now we're going to take it to the machine going to take this machine and we're going to do the same thing again that I did on the top with the threads slide the zipper pull back through and those little corners that were poking out earlier are now caught in under um, that seam I've just done. And then pull it out, clip it, and then we'll just tie it, tie them both off. I'm just going to um, trim off the excess zipper tape. Make sure I give that a quick seal. <coughs> oh, wow. I'll just take a minute to just appreciate that. I mean, yay. It's not often I get them that good. I do quite like that. What's the betting now? I've done all that lovely and that line's not going to erase or something. That will be that will be it. Right. As you can see, I have got excess pocket, but that's because I stitch it to one size. I do them both to one size. Now we're going to stitch our pockets together all the way round. But we want to make sure our top piece is out of the way. that bit put that to the bin and now that's your front pocket your front exterior top done so now we'll go on to the next one but you're going to need your d pieces a little square of decaville light or heavy your magnetic snaps and you're going to find the center and you're going to measure up the distance stated in the pattern 
on your lining fabric on your lining not like I've just done on the outside luckily I realized before I tried to put holes in it so let's hope the pen disappears Taking your bit of Decaville. I've only got very small magnets. Um, I've got a load of them, so I'm just using them up. And I know I've had silver hardware, and I've got an antique bronzy um, snap. But hey, use up what we've got. keep thinking the camera can see further this further this way but it's not it's more this way so I do apologize let's put that back up there before right now you're going to take your two pieces place them right sides together and now we're going to stitch around here huh but literally from here all the way around and back up using the seam allowance stated in the pattern. So back down to construction length stitch. Bearing in mind that your um, Zip, you've got your magnet there. So my magnet's smaller than the pattern states, I think. So um, you can either use um, I am liking this pink and this green together. I'm not much of a pink person, but I am quite liking this combo. Right now we're going to top stitch. So back to uh, top stitch then. to put that knot in the middle who knows right on to the next step right now we want our piece b and we are going to mark down on the exterior this time the um amount in the pattern oh, no, I'm going to do a little V I can see that also want to just check yep my Eiffel Towers are going up because you know really don't want to put them down Decaville. I just use Decaville to help um, 
give a little bit more um, structure. Um, I don't know, a bit more strength, that's the one behind a magnet because it's quite a high stress area. We've all got scraps of Decaville or equivalent. Right, so we're going to take one of our lining bee pieces, we're going to place it on top and we are just going to stitch across the top using the seam allowance stated in the pattern, back down to construction length stitch. Oops, Matty, you didn't sound very happy. those two were right sides together press the seam open and we'll just finger press flip it over along here, about two stops of the top stitch length. Right, now we're going on to the next step. Right, so now we're going to need our top piece A, making sure we pull our zip, our pocket out of the way, because we don't want to add that in. I found the middle of this one, what you do is I've found the middle of this one and you place, so this one's right sides up, this one's right sides together. And then the lining piece, exterior bottom is wrong side up. And then pin them together. And now we're going to sew across that with the seam allowance, making sure we leave this pocket out of the way because we don't want to sew across our pocket. Use the seam allowance stated in the pattern, construction length stitch. do it you have your flap right so now we've done that we're going to now place on our finished B piece And we're going to just base that round. So your flap doesn't lie completely completely flat it does have a bump in it because then when you've got stuff in here your flap will still fit over 
because if you have it too tight you won't be able to put anything in it so you have done it right if you have a little bump in it because it, you'll see when it's done it just sits nicely there we go that's the front of your bag done well done so you're going to need your two F pieces no your two E pieces your two exterior F pieces and your two lining F pieces and your two zips so you're going to place your exterior fabric right side up with your zip wrong side down and when you do it so your zips align the same way when you go to put them on your bag you need them like this so you need one facing left, one facing right, and then when you put them on the bag, they'll both open on the same side. And now you're going to put your right side of your lining fabric down, just lining those up. And then we're going to take that to the machine and stitch them. So stitch them with the seam allowance stated in the pattern with construction and stitch. Just gonna keep coming unthreaded today, aren't you, machine? going to flip those over and we are going to top stitch making sure we pull the bottom one down top one down top stitch then Do the same on this one make sure we pull it to the next step right so now we're going to stick our top bits on now I did fussy cut great these and now I can't I wrote too close to the top our one a so this one's the two so that they sort of matched um, so we're going to want to attach this to right sides of the zipper so we've got right sides together I'm just lining up on there right. don't top stitch just yet do not top stitch just yet so again line up Oh, silly machine. stitch at the moment now we're going to need our T pieces right now we're going to need our two T pieces when you turn over 
your piece. I'm going to line up the bottom of the T piece with the top, with the rest of the bag. Pin in place. And again, same on this side. Connect double with the bottom. I'm going to go to the machine and we're just going to um, stitch up the side. The we're going to go to the machine and we're going to just do a thin seam allowance there. And then when we get to here, we're going to push this up and we're going to top stitch and we should catch the back bit in when we do it. So we're going to stitch up here, it's going to stitch down here, down here with just a very small um, seam allowance and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to top stitch along here with this facing up and bring this down and that means then we should catch the T piece underneath. Okay so I'm going to start from here and just, I'm doing it this way so that hopefully we've caught all the layers um, but this is the front panel so we can see where we're at. Now you can see that this is at the back, so now we're going to. Oh no! How the hecky hump! I'm from. Managed to lose my zipper pull. Right, zipper pulls back on. Just be aware that they do slide off. Right, machine's come unthreaded again. We're going to top stitch this. There we go. Now you can see it's caught that in. I'm going to do this one and then I think I'm calling it quits for today because I'm often making silly mistakes. Now also, while I've just thought about it, make sure you move your zips inside your zipper pocket because I didn't do that a minute ago either. And there we go. Now we can cut the excess zipper off and we go on to the next step. Right, okay, so we now need our eye pieces, our H piece, so we've got two eyes, got a front and a back, our U piece and our zip. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our top our eye piece and we're going to place that one right side up. We're going to put the t um, zipper the wrong side down and then we're going to put this one um, lining fabric with the wrong side. So you've got 
right side, wrong side, wrong side, up. So you have um, those two facing, so front's facing, and then your zip is the other way around. Right. Take that to the machine and we're going to stitch that. And then we'll fold it over and we'll top stitch. Then we'll stitch this to here and then we'll fold it over. And then just like we did with the other one, we'll put this on the back and then stitch around it. So we'll top stitch this one and then we won't top stitch that one until later. Right. Oh, help me turn it on. one on making sure we line it up there move out of the way I tower so we don't top stitch that at the moment turn this over we can then place this on here right so just line that up clips now we're just going to base that round making sure that this is all up you can top stitch and there we go it's caught in just as I messed up the bottom line that up but that's fine it's just even that up and that's now your back panel done oh I've done it again don't forget to move your zip in it's not the end of the world if you don't we can just Good old seam ripper. Ooh. There, nobody will ever know now. Nobody will ever know. Well, you all will, but shh, don't tell anyone. Remember, make sure your zip's inside. Right, now on to the next step. Right. The pattern now says to add our D connectors, but before I do that, I'm just going to do the next step first because um, just in case, want to make sure, can you see they're all lined up, that they're all lined up, but can you see how not quite on the bottom? So I'm just going to take a pen and I'm just going to make sure that they are 
all the same length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those bits off there and then we can add on the connectors. It was just in case when I put this zip in I hadn't quite done the seam allowances or whatever so they didn't quite match up. It's all to do with putting your zip in and everything. But it's always better to have a little bit more than not enough because you can always cut it off and you can't add it back. So we're going to add on our connectors, which we will measure in the distance stated on the pattern. Make a mark. And then we will pop the connectors onto there, like so. Um, I'm going to add my fleece on first, so that's what we do next, we take it and we add on our fleece, so I'm going to go and take it over, add on the fleece and then I'll stitch these on. Right, so I've added the D-rings on, um, take it to the measurement from the pattern and just um, pop those on. I've added the fleece onto the back. Now we're going to want to find the middle of all of our pieces. Oh, you can either mark it with a pen or scissors. I've actually found the top of that one already. Let's just... And again... These ones. So that's the middle of all of them found. You can mark it with a pen or whatever that works for you. Now you're going to need to take your front piece to take your front piece and now you're going to work out where which way you want your zips to come so i want mine to sit to that side so they pull round if you want them to open the other way which would be front to back then you can move them round make sure you move your zips out of the seam allowance my foam does not seem to want to stick so let's add a bit of this in it because you know we all know how much I love double sided tape we have such a love hate relationship some reason that bit didn't want to um, didn't want to fuse on so um, it could just be that it's I was going through my scraps I was trying to use up some of my scrap um, cut offs um, which I managed to do actually managed to do the whole all the interfacing um, apart from cutting the straps and the big pieces of um, interfacing I managed to do from my scratch bin so that's good because that's not quite so overflowing now right so now we're going to want to take our front panel and we're going to want to place this one here matching up the top and match 
pushing up the bottom and then making sure the sides meet this is where your you need to be careful on what fabrics you're using and whether your machine can cope because this bit here can get quite thick by the time you've put the zip and the pockets and everything through um, so it's just something to bear in mind when you're choosing your fabrics as to whether your machine can handle all the layers because again it's quite thick on this bit here let's put a clip there to keep you together match up up here a lot of bag making is is knowing what what your machine can handle um, and we've all been there where we've thought oh yeah not a problem it can handle that fine good onk no it can't right so now we're going to take that to the machine and we're going to stitch down given the seam allowance in the pattern again my needles come on thread it's one of them days well actually it's the next day now because it was too hot and I had a headache yesterday. So I did the best thing, I gave up before I messed up. Back to construction length stitch. Right now I'm coming up to my zip, make sure that's not in the way. Bring to, to <coughs> start and stop uh, back stitch at the start and end to lock your stitches in place. Again, make sure your zips out the way. do exactly the same for this side I'm going to move the zips back to there isn't it looking good it's such a cute bag this excess zip off move your zip into the middle right again Line up the two edges. Ooh. Pin one, pin the other. Making sure you match up the top. Because you'll need that matching to be able to sew up the top of the bag. Right, now that's your exterior of your bag done. Now we've got to add the bottom. So now we're going to need our exterior bottom piece. We're going to need to find the middle on this. So that's one lot. Hold it the other way. 
match up those. And then snip. You only need to make a little V, a little snip. Because if you do it too big, it ends up being very big. Right, so now we are going to line up these four marks these four marks with the four corner marks on here i don't know how to hold on let's see if i can get this a bit better let's hope this is a little bit better right so let's start with one go to this side and then let's go to this side and then let's go to this side right so now we're going to ease the rest of these round here you might find that you will need to snip put some little snips in to help with the distribution but we'll see because you're trying to put a straight edge around a curve and when you try and do that you sometimes have to put in um you have to put in snips making sure that you've butterfly out your seams test one I made all the stuff stayed nicely stuck to it seems to be whenever I try and do a video it never wants to play ball remember but to fly out your seams even out the weight the distribution. It just saves it being too much bulk in one place. It's a little bit different here because you've got the D ring connectors. This is where it's really important as well that you've made sure you have stuck to your seam allowances. If your seam allowances are slightly off then you can have too much fabric or not enough to go round. So I managed to smush that round and that's pretty good. So now we're going to take that to the machine and we're going to stitch that down. Right, so you put it um, whichever way round works for for you to stitch it back to construction length stitch and then just slow and steady where if you've got cotton fabric and things it's a bit easier because you've got more give in the fabric so you can move it and squish it round more
first time she's going to give that a couple of backwards and forwards. Obviously missed the other one. It's all about being slow and steady. This is the other strap connector. Can't see it as one. of little puckers nothing major so there's the back of your bag and there's the front I just have to trim the seam allowance down so I trim the seam allowance down but I will leave I will leave the full seam allowance here and here just as a bit extra so now we're going to start and do the internal pocket so we need our pieces uh, V, W and X again I've used the same fabric because I don't use interfacing um, but the pattern says you can use iron on interfacing and I cut my X and my W exactly the same size to the bigger size and then cut off the excess because I get confused but whatever works for you everyone has their own way of doing it our zipper and our K panel Right, so we're going to start with our zip first. So, going to place. I always get this wrong. So, we want right side up for the fabric, right side up for the zip. I mean, it doesn't particularly matter because both sides of my fabric are pretty much the same, but it's so that when you turn the pocket, When you open it then you've got the inside so we'll take that to the machine we'll stitch across flip it top stitch and then do the same with that one there goes my fish bin. so it's given this um seam allowance in the pattern oh and look at that i've come unthreaded again it's one of those projects you know how sometimes you get them where not a problem doesn't come on thread yeah this one seems to be all the time to this project right let's try again
Right, so now we need our K piece and we are going to measure down, and find the middle. Always help to find the middle. And then from the top, we're going to measure down the distance stated in the pattern. And draw a line. This is a air erasable pen. Make sure whatever you use um, doesn't leave a mark. Right, so I folded the centre there. And now I'm going to place that along that line and to the center and then we are going to mark down the distances in the pattern so we're going to start on our interfacing piece And then taking the center to work quickly on this one, the pens like really quickly erasing. I'm going to take that to the machine, I'm going to stitch along those two lines. I'm going to do a slightly smaller stitch to make sure we get a um, a better, you know, close to the edge. We want to seam rip down to start it off and then cut down. You can draw lines if you want, but it doesn't matter so long as you've cut. This is the most important part cutting as close to the stitching as you can without cutting the stitching. The line down the middle doesn't particularly matter whether it's even this to get a good pocket turn through you want to get as close as you can to the corners and then snip them as close as you can and iron and give that a press if you can or if you're using the interface that's what you'll do right so now i've pressed that we're going to take our zipper pocket that we've started add a bit of double-sided tape this is an eighth of an inch making sure that i keep it out the seam allowance although it doesn't matter because i know my machine can take it Times like this, I wish I didn't bite my nails, but hey. Now we want to center this roughly. Okay. 
and we want to centre our zip. I'm going to take that to the machine. I'm going to stitch along here, around here, and then up there, remembering to bring the zipper pull in. Remembering to keep your zipper pocket open so you don't actually sew the other side to the other side. I have done that before. many a time oh. lift your foot up move your zipper through Making sure you keep your zipper closed. And there we go, your zip's in. Now open your zip. Right. Now what you want to do is because I because I kept the two the same size, I have a slight size difference, so I'm just going to cut that off. And then I'm going to fold up and then fold this one down. I'm just going to pop a clip. No, that's a sewing foot. Line that up. Now we're going to take it back to the machine and we're going to stitch down here and down here. We're going to leave this open for turning. You do not want to close that gap. Otherwise you're not going to be able to turn your bag through making sure you remove it away from the lining fabric again have to make sure you remove the lining fabric down out of the way Yes, I have sewn them two both together before now. So now that means that when you go to sew your pocket up, you've got a nice flat line folded edges to do it. So we'll pop that to one side now and we can get on to the next step. Find the middle of both of your uh, lining panels. You're going to pop them together and we're going to stitch down this side and that side. And then we are going to add our bottom panel. Right, so now we're going to sew down the side seams with the seam allowance stated in the pattern. Oh look, I've come unthreaded again.
again we found the middles of all of the circles the base even line up your so this time it's the seam allowance seam so butterfly open your seam that helps distribute the thickness Sometimes the lining can be a little harder to pin or clip because you haven't got quite as much structure to it. Right, I'm going to take that to the machine. Again, slow and steady. Don't ever be afraid because you're in charge of your machine and we all have to start somewhere. And we all have many bags in our, um, skeletons in our cupboard of bags that just did not go right. how you get better you learn moving your fabric, rearranging it and following your seam allowance. on to the next step. Now on to the next step. So now we need our M pieces and our zip. Um, this is the final bit of putting together before we do the construction. Now this bit can be done in vinyl, cork, whatever. The only thing I would say is, again, you know your machines. The, the last assembly bit can get a bit thick in the corners. So if your machine can't handle real bulk stick with a fabric um which is what i've done 
um, but it's great because you can you can mix so many different bits up within this pattern um, to get so many different looks. Right, find the middle of all our pieces. I never cut zipper tape. because I don't want it to fray, which you can do if you cut it. Now it's worth remembering, especially if it's the first time doing this bag, that the, this is the zip side, this is the bit that goes onto the bag. So if you need to make a note on your fabric before you assemble it, go ahead. So we're going to take one of our fabric pieces right side up. Then we are going to place our zip wrong side down, lining up the middles. And then we're going to take our lining piece wrong side right sorry dyslexic brain really struggles with this bit trying to word it so we have exterior fabric up zip down and the right sides together basically with the zip facing the fabric sorry i know that's really confusing but my dyslexic brain really struggles to um, put that into words. take that to the machine. I'm going to stitch that with the seam allowance in the pattern. Making sure we're on construction length stitch. zip's going to be in the way a bit here so I'm going to move it down because if I move it the other way I might just roll it off the end so I have tacked it across right now we're going to top stitch the same with this one. Middles. And I'm going to stitch across there, Get the zip out the way. I'm 
coming up to the zip stop lift up your foot and i'm going to pull very carefully hold on to that end so that i don't pull it off the end I pull the bottom away and the top away. And that's your top panel done. Now on to the next bit. Right, so you want your external piece out, inside out, and you want to bring your lining away from your exterior fabric. Now, this is the front with the um, pocket on, and the back is the um, zip. So you want your to open your bag from the front. Zip's a bit longer than. So what you want to do is place right sides together and pin your side there. And then what you want to do is come up to here right so you want to so you want to pin along here Working your way along, you will find that your overlay is slightly longer than your um, ends of your bags. That's what it's meant to be. Just following the oh right. Undo your zip a bit more and then measure up two centre bits. You want to butterfly open your seam. Follow that round. Okay, we'll take that to the machine. We're going to stitch that with the seam allowance given in the pattern, making sure that we have. You can open the zip all the way, but I like to keep some of the oomph of the zip. So I've opened it enough that I can open it more when I need to. Right.
going from this side so that I can see which line I'm supposed to be um, following because there is a curve on the fabric on the bag. seams down making sure it's just the seams and not um, any of the pocket bits or anything or the lining panel panel making sure we have unzipped the zipper now we are going to place this inside bees and repeat the process. My zip is now fully open so I will need to move that down a little bit so that I don't catch it in any of the um, stitching that's to come. It won't go too far but it will go a little way down. we tuck as much of the bag as we can out of the way. Two zips together.
Now I'm going to take that to the machine and stitch that with the seam allowance in the pattern. Right, making sure you're on construction length stitch. And again, I'm coming from this side to make sure that I can follow the correct curve of the bag. sure the lining's out of the way. I almost sewed over it then. Right, so now we're going to cut down those seams to the amount in the pattern. Right, so now we want to find the back panel, which is this one for me. Right, so we want to... Right, so now we're going to want to find our back, which is this one. We want to flatten out this seam. And we want to line it up with the zip. Now this this top flap will be longer than um, the lining, which is fine. We will just put those line those up. Nice and flat. So what I've done is I've lined that up with the back of the zipper. Now this ex ex excess zipper we're now going to cut off. So you've got a nice flat top. Oh, the zip feels a bit close. Put a pin on there. It's all about feeling your way around on this bit. Just standing up. Right. That's it. Right. So now we want to take our our two-inch D-ring 
and we are going to place it between the zip and the find the middle so what we're actually doing is we're actually putting it between the zip and the um, exterior sorry sometimes I struggle to get my words from my brain to me mouth So, making sure that that's all nicely in and that you have only put it between the exterior. I'm going to take it to the machine and we're going to stitch across. the machine I'm going to stitch across there making sure you're back on construction length zip width you may find you need a hump jumper just as it's a little bit thick times so right now we turn the bag through so we leave this bit for now pokey thing That's where you made sure you put that through the exterior, so between the zip and the exterior flap. Right, so now we're going to do this side. I'm actually going to zip, zip up give it the tension making sure I'm lining so this is the exterior and this is the lining and this is the extra of the flap so I want to just open up that seam and place it against there and then I want the center of the zip against there as well. So let's put the clip. We're basically making sure that the exterior lining, exterior and the lining meet, meet up and that the zip lies flat. Now what we're going to do is on this side, we're going to cut off the excess, just like we did on the other side. Now we're going 
to take this. We're going to make a mark. to make sure that this is the right way. And now we want to poke this down between the layers. making sure that the zip is the right way up. You're going to go to the machine now and you're going to stitch across there with the seam allowance in the pattern. I'm going to go backwards and forwards a few times to make sure it stays. Now you've done that, now you want to work your strap cover over and that hides all your raw ends and now you want to place your straps through And then what you do is you go through the bottom sliders. You'd put your sliders on. You have forgotten something. So you poke your strap through. And you go up underneath. And then you go back through. And back round. And then you'd stitch that. My straps are really long because I'm not sure what length I need. But as you can see, I've, they're actually twisted. I've actually got them twisted. So can I twist them back? Or do I? No, right. So I'll need to redo that one because I've managed to twist it. 